call from? We've been trying to reach you about your... Hey, hello? Oh, hello there. Hey. So we've been trying to reach you about your car's extended warranty. Would you like me to forward you to the... I've never actually gotten past that part. I always I, hang that up. That is exactly what I was going to say. Exactly what I was going to say is... I. I it's so I was immediately going to say you're going to find that you you're going to realize that you didn't you don't have anything past that. Yeah. How do you how does that yeah. feel? You know, I I I did the bit and it made, you know, uh, here I am. So so there must be something else, right? Not ne- no. Not necessarily. I don't think that there must be. No, but I hope there is. Okay, that's different from there must be. True. Um. Okay, so you hope there is something. Well, so then let me ask you: When you, in your head, did you, did you form some sort of mental schema of how this would go down before you did it, or did you have the idea immediately do it? Did you form? Did you? At all, I pretty much just go. it was it was pretty much just hand to mouth. Immediately went straight to the to the phone with that one. Okay. Um. You know what? By the way, that's fine because I would rather you try it than overthink all the different ways it could go and not and then just decide after all to not try it. You know. Yeah. Because what? Because well, uh, you learn nothing if you don't try. Right. Yeah. I mean, overthinking can really lead to just not doing it. Right. So just do the thing. Yeah. So I'm glad you did it. Um. And I. And, and you know, look. What was your whole thing? You were gonna do it and see what happens. And ultimately, what happened is that we got to have this nice little interaction. Um. That I feel like had a good. Um, takeaway message to it. So it, so yeah. it, so at the end of the day, it worked. If if it working means that it led to something at least mildly productive. Yeah. So I guess I guess uh, we answered the question of whether it would work or not. Sure. Sure. What did you say? Your name was? I didn't. Oh yeah. Well, it was a pleasure talking to you, man. I hope you have a good rest of the night. Likewise, Lyle. Good luck with getting across America, and thanks for doing your thing. Thank you, man. Take care. Bye. Kia, Kiara. Hello. Yeah. Is this Ki- Hello. Who is? What's your name? Uh, Kiara. Hi. How are you, Kiara? Oh my goodness gracious! Hello, I'm good. How are you? You You say, "Oh my, what is?" What, can I? In that, "Oh my goodness <laughs> gracious," I, I sense so many different emotions. Um, I know. I'm so excited. I'm sorry. <laughs> No, you don't have to apologize for anything. Um, where, are the, where are these emotions coming from? Let's dive into them. Um, well, I called today because a kid that I know has been kind of flirting with me. And then all of a sudden I was like, hey, guess what? I have this big crush on a girl and I need your help. Okay. And I was like, I don't know what to do about it because he kind of told me and he's like, I need your help. And I'm like, all right, but then you just asked me out like two days ago. How old are you, Kiara? I'm 19. All right, so he a- wait. So wait, he asked you out two days ago. He asked me out two days prior, and then was like, "Hey, I have a big crush on this girl. I need your help." <laughs> why would he do? That's Stu. Why? Why would he ask you out if, and then tell you that he is uh, talking to another girl? I have yeah. I have no idea. He was flirting with me, being all nice and stuff, and then all of a sudden he's like, "I'm at this party with a girl." And I need your help. I really don't know what to do. I've been loving her. And we've been walking home every day from high school. And I'm like, 
okay, dude, you're like 25 now. Get over it. Um, so hold on. You said he asked you out. Did you go on, like, he, he said to you, he said, Milady, I'd like to take you on an evening on the town. Something to that effect, I assume. Uh, and then did you go then on that evening on the town? So he asked me out, and then he was like, uh, my brother has corona, maybe, possibly, so I can't go out. I said, yeah, that's fine, that's cool, understandable. And then uh, my mom ended up getting corona, and I got tested, and I was negative. But he said things got a little too, not like he said, but I guess things got a little too uh, busy for his liking. And he moved past it and then asked me help about this girl. Uh, it, it sounds like you shouldn't be at the party then. It, it sounds like you, you should warn everyone at the party that they have coronavirus. Oh, him? Yeah. Yeah, definitely, right? I don't know any of his friends, though. I only know him. What's That's your name, problem. Kiara? Kiara, I don't like. I, I, I something, something doesn't sit right with me about uh, this guy. This kid? Yeah, me too. That's what my mom says. I've been crushing on him for like five years now, which probably sucks. Kind of a simp move, but <laughs> I've heard this. Th- why? Do, I've heard a lot of girls refer to guys as like they kids, like even if they're like significantly older than them. Like I have a friend who oh. does that too. Like she says, like I've been talking to this kid. That's a thing I've been noticing lately. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't know. I've been saying "kid" for the longest time now. I don't know. I don't know where it came from. Ever, ever since uh, I feel like "boy" got a little weird. I was like, "Oh, just boy." Guy seems appro- Guy seems like the most appropriate. <laughs> I mean, yeah, guy. I guess guy or like dude. This dude I've been talking to. I guess kid does seem a little weird. This kid I've been talking to. So you've had a crush on this 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 for life form person thing. For uh, five years, you say? Yeah, and before that, too, when we first, because we were in, like, this uh, hangout group together, um, I was a little too young for him at the time. And I, I fully I understand that, right? But he, we went out to the mall with my friends and stuff, and he was like, yeah, I don't like you. And then my friends were like, oh, just hold her hand, just hold her hand. And I was like, dude, stop talking about this. This is weird. And he's like, yeah, I just don't like you at all. And then he dropped me for a year. And then he came out of nowhere, like, flirting and all this stuff. And I was like, okay, I guess so. Uh, uh, yeah, that sounds a little strange for that he was hanging out with you when you were 14. Oh, yeah, it was, it was a, I mean, yeah, yeah, true. We were, it was weird. It was like this, like, teenage adolescent hangout group that we were kind of part of. We became friends through that. Uh, well, well, Kiara, listen, uh, for, 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 for multiple, multiple reasons that you have described this evening, uh, not knowing much about this guy, I, I, I think that it would be best for you to pursue, uh, uh, you know, alternative, uh, relationship options, you know, I, uh, you've, you've presented no information that, uh, so far that... It makes me believe that this guy is, is will provide much value to your life. Right, like a cool dude. That's what my mom said, too. I know. I really do. At first, he seemed so cool, and we're kind of clicking on all these same things, and we're like, we all, we like the same things, and we like the same video games. I don't know. It was a weird thing. You'll find <laughs> other people who like the same uh, things and the same video games as you, Kiara. I, I, I do believe yeah. that. Yeah. Um, but you know what? You're 19. You don't even. I don't, I don't even worry about this stuff. If I were you, I, I. What do you do with your life? What What about outside of your dating world? Um. Well, I got I got laid off from McDonald's, so that sucks <laughs> a while ago. But um, nothing really. Honestly, me and my family just go out on the river. Um, I try to help around the house as much as I could. That's about it. I'm looking for a new job, so. Mm-hmm. Um, are you going to go to school? Do you, are you have like a thing that you want to do with your existence? So like I graduated high school, um, and I really wanted to become a special effects makeup artist because I, like I don't know, that. I've been working on that for years. Yeah. Right. That's very cool. I think that's cool. I think Thank that's cool. Thank Look, uh, here's, th- here's what I like. Here's, here, let me get, let me give you my vision for you. Um, Kiara. 
is okay. you're, you you have this sort of um, thing where you want a cool guy, right? But Kiera, yeah, instead yeah. of focusing on trying to find a cool guy, I think you should focus on becoming the cool girl. You know, be the cool yeah. uh, makeup effects artist girl. You know, uh, uh, really lean into in, into that more than uh, trying to find someone else to bring coolness into your life, Kier. I believe that you have all the necessary tools at hand to be the cool person uh, on your own. You don't need another person to uh, uh, fill your life with cool experiences and, uh, f you know, all, all that. So, so yeah, I mean, you know... I, I would focus on that, Kiara. All right. Yeah, thank you. Of course. Of course. Um, what were you going to say just now? I interrupted you. I was about to say uh, my family goes on a whole bunch of adventures that they uh, take along everybody. So, honestly, I really Beautiful. don't need somebody. Yeah. You could just go do that. Beautiful. I like that for you, Kiara. Um, I, ho I, hope, I hope you keep that to heart. That, uh... You've got you've got what you need already. Thank you so much. Of course, you have a good rest of the night. You too. Have a good night. Hello. Hi. Hi. What's up? I'm a gecko. Yes, you are. What's your name? My name's Sandra. Sandra, like Cassandra? No, just Sandra. Like Sandra D. Sandra D. Yeah. <clears throat> what are you doing right now, Sandra D? Um, I'm just watching the new Boston. <laughs> I I, I kind of have no idea what you just said. I said I was watching the new Boss Baby movie. I have a talk. There's a new Boss Baby movie? Yeah. How is it? Is it any good? Um, honestly, I stopped watching because. You started streaming, and interesting. I was, yeah, I mean, it it didn't hold my attention, but it definitely held my my three year old's attention. I I'm gonna be honest. I'm truly truly honored to uh be hold your attention more than the Boss Baby movie because <laughs> I'm just a dumb guy. I, I don't have anything, and they have got like a whole movie studio over there. So, um, you know, I really feel like uh, you switching on this um, instead of the boss baby is a, is a victory for the little geck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I suppose so. <clears throat> uh, you have a toddler, you say? Yes. And a 17-year-old and an 11-year-old. I'm kind of a old lady. Interesting. Every... So you have a 17-year-old... An 11-year-old mm -hmm. and a toddler. Yes. How did it end up that they were so far apart? Are they all from... Can I... I don't know how willing to answer personal questions you are, but at any given time, you don't, you <laughs> cannot... Uh, you cannot. Uh, but I, I'm curious. Are they all from the same guy? No. No, no, no. Um, the two older ones are from my first marriage. And so this little mm. guy... He's from my my new one. Mm. So I got two um, baby daddies. That's all. That's cool. Are you do you still keep in contact with your your son's parents, your son's father? Um. Well, no. My little guy. I'm with his dad. It's the girls. My my daughters. That um. I oh, mean, sure. I have I have to talk to him every once in a while. Um. Mm. But it's I don't know. It's whatever, I guess. It's not, like, anything crazy. I don't have any drama, which is nice. That's good, though. It's, it's yeah. good to have a drama-free relationship with your children's father. Yeah, it is, because uh, I see some pretty fucked up shit on the internet. I'm part of this, like, stepmom group, um, and there's a lot of fucking crazy-ass people. Really? When it comes is to it their a... kids, yes, they're crazy. Is it like a Reddit group or a message board or something like that? A Facebook thing? It's a Facebook thing. It's called a... Uh, am I allowed to say the group name? Sure, yeah. I, I, you know. It's called the Unapol 
unapologetic stepmom group. And so I, I, I joined it because I do have a stepson with my new, with my new guy. And, um, you know, just for support, because I've never, I've never, you know, obviously I've never had like a stepkid before. So I learned some like tips and stuff, but really all I do is go in there and complain about, about like the birth mom of their stepkids and really how, yeah. And so, I mean, to be honest, I mean, I should, I shouldn't really be in it, but I do, I do love, I love other people's drama. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So I guess that is something um, thing tonight that excites me is is other people's drama as long as it's not mine. <laughs> Interesting. So, like, so when you say you shouldn't be there, do you mean to say this group is not giving you any actual value in terms of how to be a better stepmom, but you just look at it because you 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 like uh, being a, a third party observer of the drama? Correct. Yes. So. I don't have any drama to contribute, um, I guess, to the group. So I'm just an observer, a lurker, really. You know, there is, I, 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 I hate to say it, because in a perfect world, we would all just be grateful. You know, we, we would all just kind of block everything out and stay in our own lanes. But there is a lot of, uh, there is some value to be gained in, uh, you know, looking at other stepmoms and going... You know, what I got going on, not that bad compared to uh, what I'm seeing on this uh, crazy Facebook group. Yeah. Yeah, it does give me some some hope that, um, you know, I'm doing the right thing, that we're in a good in a good place with everything versus those other crazy people. Can I ask what is at least, um, you don't have to give me the number one, but maybe something among the craziest things you have seen in the stepmom Facebook group? Oh my gosh. I honestly, I don't even know where to start. Um, it's just a, a lot of, it's just a lot of craziness, especially when it comes to people's like court dates and them asking for like, um, advice about what they should do. Like, um, in terms of, you know, like keeping track of like the text messages and like screenshots and stuff like that of what the BM, the BM is what they call the birth mom. Um, mm. But anyways, it's just like a bunch of stuff like that. I can't really, I can't really pinpoint like one crazy thing. It's just, a, it's just a lot. It's a, there's a lot to choose from. It's it's the vibe of the stress. Of them yes. having to keep such perfect track of all these text messages where you're like, I'm glad I don't have to do that. Yeah, yeah. It gets pretty crazy. A lot of petty people. That's for sure. A lot of pettiness. Do you have a good relationship with your uh, son's birth mother? Or, or yeah. your daughter's birth mother? No, we actually do. Um, she is super cool. Um, she's actually on my, on my son's... Uh, emergency contact list for his little preschool so i mean she is somebody that we i mean that i have to see yeah so i'm 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 sure it sounds like you're the only one uh, in that facebook group that has uh their their son uh has has the birth mom has the bm uh (laughs) in in uh their emergency contacts yeah i think so to be honest I, I don't really, I mean, obviously, though, the people, I don't know if there's other lurkers like me who just like to read all the craziness of it, um, but maybe there are some other normal people on there. I haven't seen any, seen it, but who knows, maybe. But maybe I do there's some in this chat. Maybe there's other maybe. people who are like, for someone else has found this crazy stepmom group, and for they're yeah. going to hit you up so you guys can talk about it. Okay. Um, well, thank you so much for calling. What did you say your name was? Uh, I'm sorry, what was it? I said thank you so much for calling. What did you say your name was? Oh, my name is Sandra. Sandra, it was a pleasure speaking with you. You have a good rest of the night. Thanks, you too, Gek. Call from... Bananas. Bananas. What? You're on the thing. I'm dead. 
What's going on? Uh, what, everyone you say you're that. dead? Yeah. yeah oh, I know you said doing, bet. Right? You said What'd bet. What'd you say? Can you turn off your stream? Yes. Okay. I, 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 I'm wondering how. I, I, bet, I wonder if I'm gonna be still saying that a year from now. If I'll have fixed that a year from now, or if I'll still be. Can someone hold me accountable to fix to fix my phone line system at some point? Do you have someone in your personal life that could do that? No, everyone in my personal life is busy. Everyone in my personal well, life has elected to um, do realer things with their life, um, huh. which I am okay with. I understand that. I mean, you're comparing again. Fuck that. Yeah, fuck that. Right? You're, you're, what you're doing is pretty vital. I wanted to say DMT uh, doodles, but saying bananas over and over again is like much easier, so. Um, what? I wanted to say DMT doodles, but saying bananas over and over. Is your name DMT doodles? That that's that's my Instagram. Yeah. I asked you if um, you had tried DMT, and you said no. So I guess that's my main. Uh, uh, okay, so you had. By the way, are you on DMT right now? You you don't no, sound. No, def, def, definitely not. Okay. Definitely. Have not. you been on DMT in the last like twenty four hours? No, no. It's been a few weeks since I left the dimension. Yeah. Since you left the dimension. Yeah. You sound. I. I. I, I want to put my finger on it, but I know I'm not going to. Um, Feel free. There's. I don't know. But I mean, here's the thing: is I don't know you, so to say that you sound weird right now, I have no so information. My I don't have enough. Like, my, my heart rate's like ninety or like hundred right now. So. Oh, yeah. you're nervous. Fair enough. Yes. That's interesting to me because I. You know. You look. To leave the dimension <laughs> mentally yeah. sounds to me wise. like it would be a very nerve-wracking experience. Would you not the agree? The most. The most. Yes, definitely. Uh, calling an internet gecko man seems like it's a few tiers below that in terms of uh, the, the stress it might induce. So I, I'm I'm surprised that you're nervous right now. Okay, well, can I explain that real quick? I would love for you to explain that. For like the past 72 hours, I've had nothing to do. So I've been re-watching your old streams. Or not re-watching, nice. I've never seen them. I've never seen them. So I'm like I'm watching them for the first time. And uh, so like you, you have been my life for the past three days, dude. And so that's why I'm so nervous. Yeah. Is it weird that you've been? Because I, I, I'm interested. So it's weird that you've been listening to me for the past 72 hours, and now we're like talking on the phone. I mean, I was like, I'm going to talk to him one day, and I, I, I've called like I don't know, 25 times tonight. Sure, sure. And I was like, Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to talk to this, this awesome human who does a weird service to our community. Yeah. Uh, you know, I always say, um. Because here's the thing. When I listen to shows like this, or if I were listening to my stream, or like some like call-in thing, or whatever, or even a game show, I feel like if you listen to it or watch it that much, at some point you're going to go, you're going to think in your head about what you would say or what you would be like if you were on the thing. You had to have, I, I, did that happen? Did you ever think like, yes. did you ever like come up with a fictional scenario? Like what would you say if you were on the phone? Yes. And I'm now curious. How okay. is the reality of your call matching up with that schema that you set? Well, uh, I didn't anticipate uh, the physiological reaction I would have to right. talking to another human. Um, of course. So I guess my delivery has been a bit delayed by mm -hmm. five minutes. And um, yeah, that, that's my Fuck. response to that question. It sneaks up on you, dude. I hate it. It's so annoying. It's the most obnoxious. It's, it's an obnoxious thing where you have a 
You're like, I'm gonna go do this thing. And you picture in your mind you doing it, the way that you talk, the way that you come off, and then you get there in reality, and then all of a sudden your body starts, your heart, exactly what's going on, your heart rate starts going, you speak slower because you're nervous, and you're like, fuck, I didn't factor this into the best part of the plan. And then it throws you, you all off. You live forwards and learn backwards, Mr. Gick. Oh, you said God. you said something the other day when I was listening to your stream that uh, it's important to feel nervous. Like my life is exciting enough to feel nervous, mm. and I was like, "That's so facts." Very. Oh, I, I got to take my own advice on that, dude. I really do. It's, it's hard. It, it's, it's practice. I think it's not. It's not something you could just realize and then put into action. It's like maybe it takes a while. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. yeah, infinite patience is not virtuous. Yeah, also. Also, everyone 21 plus should try DMT. I have to say that while I'm here. Why uh, 21 plus? Is it, is it like, uh, uh, can you not be 18? Thing. Oh, yeah. I thought I thought DMT was wholly illegal. It's been decriminalized in California and Oregon. So if you're 21, you can possess it, share it, smoke it. Yeah. But you can't like set up a like DM, you know, DMT you can. DNT Emporium. Yes, I can. I plan on it one day. Yes, to experience the molecule, extract the molecule. Yeah, definitely. All right, my lights like in my listen. house just started flickering, and I'm afraid that my Wi-Fi is going to cut out. So I wanted to make that clear. But I want to. I'm sorry. What were you going to say? Uh, thank you for the clarity. First off, um, yeah, I just plan to spread the molecule as much as possible before I die. Um, you, uh, we never got to this point. You, uh, I forgot what I was going to ask you. You said you left the universe and you were going to explain that, and then you got into how you were listening to my podcast. But I want to hear your explanation of you leaving the universe. Um, well, you take a very small amount of this substance, like tiny, like on top of your fingernail amount, and you vaporize it. And you take three big hits, and then you're asleep for ten minutes. And your your third eye, which is I feel like it's you, or your energy is then directed at like a 45 degree angle out of your head into another realm. If you get there, if you take the full three hits and then you burst into another realm and there's beings there, they're showing you weird shit and talking to you and they're kind of annoyed sometimes that they have to stop what they're doing to, to deal with your energy. And they're always like, here, we're here to show you stuff. Here's all the knowledge. And then you forget it all like a dream kind of 10 minutes later and you're back sober dober. It, 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 we make it all the time in our lungs and our brain. And Dr. Rick Strassman out of New Mexico did studies in the 90s, DEA sanctions. So there's there's plenty of research on it, and it's bioavailable. It comes from within. So it sounds yeah. like it's a it sounds like it's a, the way that it is experienced is very similar to just a really intense dream. Yeah, like instant dream. But like dream is all of this reality. You don't experience nothing of this reality over there. It's all foreign and it's perfect and it's machine. And it's, there's no, yeah, there's no faults. There's no yeah. faults here in this reality. Yeah. I want to try psychedelic drugs very badly, but I just am not. I've never done like acid or shrooms or any of that stuff because uh, I'm not. I'm not at the point where I want to yet. But I eventually would like to, cause I, cause here's the thing, I have no idea what you're talking about, but I believe you. You know what I mean? I hear uh, you. So I, I want to see it for myself. Um, yeah, it's it's your birthright. What's, what's it's my birthright? What do you, is is do you do you believe that it's everyone's birthright to see this, Genuine, this realm? Genuinely, because it comes from the ground. Yeah, I mean, it comes from it comes from the the rock we're floating on, like. It's in thousands of living plants and animals. All you have to do is extract it. And it's in you right now in very small quantities. So, Are you saying I'm high I, right now? No. And I, and I appreciate your sentiment saying you want to try psychedelics. Yeah, that's very cool. I was hoping that was your, your thing. Or I was hoping that I'd was try what it, you want. But, uh, you know, here's the thing is, you know, I, I, I'm... I'm you know, uh, can at times, you know, I mean, pretty the same as everyone, you know, be a little anxious, be a little overthinky, be a little too deep into my head. And that happens, you know, I like to smoke weed to relax, but when I smoke too much, I go deep into my own head and I don't like that that much unless if I'm in the right 
sort of mood for it. And I feel like these drugs, psychedelics, they're just like, hey, you know, when you go into your head when you smoke marijuana, let's dr drill into the center of the head. <laughs> Directly. Yes, and four buckets and buckets of it. Yes, it's definitely right. weed times a million. But it's um, only 10 minutes, unlike mushrooms or acid, which are like I hours, know, 12 hours, 8 hours. That's another thing, is like it's only 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. I could do 10 minutes. I got 10 minutes. But dude, you, yeah, it's very, it's like the, you know, the most intense, the scariest 10 minutes of your life. Yeah. Beautiful as well, of course. But definitely scary. <sighs> Well, I'll say one thing. You're a good advertisement for this. You should. They should pay you. Whoever makes money off of DMT, you should be like an influencer there are people, or something. I, I do. I do. Yeah, there are people who are study it constantly in Canada and San Diego and Michigan. Yeah. You're a good salesman. I hope that you're Thank earning you. commission off of all the DMT that uh, you're getting people to smoke. Yes, I, I, I don't care about that. I, I want the collective energy to like be awakened. It's so obnoxious watching all the sheeple. Not, yeah, anyways. Beautiful. What'd you say your name was? DMT Doodles? DMT Doodles, Mr. Kick. Well, DMT You're Doodles, gonna thank you up. so much for calling in, man. Yep. Appreciate you. Goodbye. Have a good Likewise. night. Likewise. Call from Quinn. Quinn. Yes. Quinn, we've talked before, haven't we? I'm sorry, could you say that again? <laughs> we've talked before, haven't we? Uh, no, I'm just Quinn. That wasn't really an answer to my question, but I also kind of think it was. <laughs> it was hard to understand, sorry. Um, yeah, I don't know, phones, man. What about them? I feel like they could be better. I feel like there's more we could do, make the uh, connection a little bit better, person to person, you know. I always, I, ever since I was little, I've always had an issue with just not being able to really understand what is being said through the speaker, you know. Ever since you were little, you've, have an, you've had an issue understanding phones. No, understanding, like, the person's voice coming out of the speaker. Like, I have a hard time understanding what's being said. Are you having a hard time understanding what I'm saying right now? No, right now it's good. But what you were saying originally, whenever I first got online, that I had a hard time with that. Mm. Okay, so, so this only applies to the beginning of phone conversations, but it slowly fades away as you get deeper into the phone conversation. I believe so. You know, I've never really thought about it real hard, but I think I think there is something to it. What thrills you? See, honestly, those uh, roller coasters on in the background. I haven't been to Six Flags in a long time, and seeing these videos has really taken me back. Mm. What is it taking you back to? So, Six Flags used to have a... Uh, branch out in Houston, Texas called uh, Astro World, and I think they closed that down when I was like seven or eight and several of the roller coasters on there are actually reminding me of a lot of the rides that were out there so you know it's just bringing back a lot of memory of a uh, summer out with the family in the real hot Houston heat and just uh, you know going around on rides and having a time of my life you know, as much of a time as a five-year-old kid can have. Hmm. Let me ask you something. Have you had fun like that since? I don't think so, no. How does that make you feel? It feels like, you know, I need to get out there and do something. <laughs> I need to look for that thrill. Mm. Mm. Where do you think you might find it? I don't know. I recently moved out to North Carolina, and I'm kind of looking for things to do. There's a uh, place over here called the Whitewater Center where they do Olympic trials. They've got a zip line out there that I'm thinking of getting up on. Ooh. Is it a, a zip line and can't be an Olympic sport, is it? No, it's uh, meant for, like, whitewater rafting kind of stuff. That, that's the main attraction there, but they've got some, uh, like, you can do some kayaking, they've got zip lines, they've got all sorts of things out there. Okay. A zip lining is, it sounds like it would be fun. 
But it's a very uh, short experience, you know. It's not going to solve all your problems getting on a zip line. I know that from experience. You get on the zip line, you go across the ocean or whatever, you go across the lake, and then, uh, you know, you still got to go to work tomorrow. Yeah, but, you know, in that moment, in that moment, everything melts away. Hmm. Okay, so you're going to go to this Olympic trial zip line thing. And what else what else would you like to do to bring more thrills into your life? That's that's a very good question and honestly I think I have to think on that a little bit cuz you know right now it's like I'm just trying to make ends meet work, you know, take care of my relationship, got a fiance, hopefully going to marry in the next year or so cuz you know pandemic and everything. Got to make sure that the whole family can come out and have fun. So yeah, I I just got to reflect on that a little bit, Mr. Gek. How did you meet your fiance? So we met at a coffee shop. I was working there, and then she came in, and uh, she was dressed in a way that made me think she was um, into girls and not into guys. So I just kind of was like, you know, I'll never have a chance with her. But then one of my coworkers ended up uh, befriending her, and she was like, hey, that guy thinks you're cute. And then my coworker was like, "Hey, she thinks you're cute." And then we started talking. So um, it went from there. That's nice. That's cool. Um, I love stories like that. You know, I feel like today most people they meet through the apps or something like that. It's <laughs> cool to uh, you know meet people in person like that. Yeah, I agree. And well, I'm curious. What did what was her reaction when you told her? that you at first thought that she was into girls? She uh, said, yeah, I kind of get that a lot. <laughs> she, it was just, at the time, she had a shorter hair and was dressing in some, like, uh, plaid and stuff. Uh, she likes to call it a grunge fashion. So it was mm. just kind of a little bit less feminine. I don't want to say masculine, but just a little less feminine. Feminine. Um, is, uh, would you consider, now, let me ask you, so that, would you consider yourself to be grungy in any way, shape, or form? No, you not wear, at all. you know, ripped <laughs> jeans? It's funny, because you don't sound like it at all. You kind of sound like you wear glasses. Oh, I actually wear, do like, wear a glasses. a button-down shirt. And I am wearing a button-down shirt right now. Got it from the van store, so, you know, it's a little more stylish. Hmm. You don't sound like you have any, like, tattoos or piercings or anything like that. Nope, not yet. Hopefully I'll get a tattoo one of these days. What are you going to get a tattoo of? That's uh, still up in the air. <laughs> I'm still looking at my options. What are the options you're looking at? I was thinking maybe something a little more, you know, traditional. Some, you know, a traditional kind of tattoo. Definitely not going to do anything tribal. Uh, since I'm still working in coffee, a uh, kind of stereotypical thing is to get a tattoo of a coffee plant. So like the cherries on the stem with some leaves. Um, and, you know, I could get something like that. that. I find it funny that because you work at a coffee shop, you want to get um, a coffee plant. That seems like, like if an Amazon worker wanted to get like a box. You know, if an Amazon worker wanted to get a box, that's you know, go for it, man. Maybe Jeff Bezos got has a box. You never know. He's got the smile on there, for sure. You think he? You think he has a box tattooed on his ass? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And his new girlfriend is probably loving it. Beautiful. What'd you say her name was? Quinn. Quinn. Good luck with the engagement. How are you gonna propose? Thank you very you have much. A thing? You have a thing you're gonna do? No, I actually already did propose. So oh, she did. was really into uh, yeah. What'd she's she really say? into frogs. She said yes, of course. You said she's really into frogs. Yeah. So I asked her, "Will you share my lily pad with me?" Oh, that's cute. That's very cute. Well, I wish you a, a lily pad full of uh, love and coffee and uh, punk rock, my friend. Thank you. You yeah, have a good one, Mister Gag. Call from Will O. 
Is it? Can I call you Willow or is it Will O? Oh, I, it's Will O. O for the last name. Oh, okay. How you doing, Will? Good. How are you? Uh, not too bad. Will, how old are you, dude? Uh, I'm like 25. I kind of stopped counting after 21. Really? You you stopped counting? Uh, yeah. You know, still have birthdays, but the number age doesn't really matter, right? Uh, I, this is such an interesting philosophy. I've never heard from someone who does not count their age, or at least keep track. Uh, yeah, I, I forget all the time, actually. Um, I always think I'm like 24 or 23 still. Uh, you know, I like this because you're not defining yourself by your age. You're just living life at your own pace. That's smart. Yeah, age is, age is more of a mindset, really. Okay, what age do you feel as though you are, having not kept track? Yeah, I guess I still feel like 23. You feel like you're 23. There's really, and the thing is, look, you said you stopped counting when you were 21, and you think you might be like 25? Uh, definitely four or five. There's really not that big of a fucking difference between any of the ages yeah. in your early 20s. Like twenty three, it doesn't matter. It, I, you know what? You're kind of selling me on. I might try to forget my age. That'd be difficult. It be this is a thing. Is it's this is a difficult thing to do retroactively, because I'd like to forget my age, but I don't think I can. We'll just you know stop counting from there, and then in a few years you won't even know anymore. Interesting. That's a good idea. Yeah, I like that. I'm, I'm going to take that. Um, Will, I have a question for you. Yeah. What thrills you? What thrills me? Um, oh yeah, I just did skydiving. Uh, that was thrilling. You went skydiving? Yeah, out of a real plane and everything. I'm glad, I'm glad you went out of a real plane and not out of a... Well, I don't even know what's the alternative. I guess you... Like a, a magical pixie comes down to Earth and grants you the power of flight, and then you fly up into the air, and then the pixie turns it off. Yeah, I. Uh, that was the alternative, but it was uh, too expensive, so we just went with the, the you know the plane. Does sound expensive. Does sound very expensive. <laughs> um, like okay, so you went skydiving. What? 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 Um. I mean, skydiving. For the record, I would never, ever do that. Um, props to you for doing it. I would never do that. I'm curious what compelled you to want to go skydiving. Um, so, you know, I've always wanted to. It, it was kind of on the list. Um, it was uh, my sister's graduation from high school, so it was on her list, too. Uh, and, yeah, you know, when someone... I never thought I would say this, but when someone says, do you want to jump out of a plane? My answer was yes. Mm, so it was, it was primarily your sister's idea, and then you hopped on. Oh, yeah. Hmm. But I tried to do it uh, prior to COVID with uh, another friend, and then, you know, that happened. Right. You said you always wanted to do it. Can I, can I like, know why you wanted to do it? Like, what about it sounded appealing to you? It's thrilling. Do you consider yourself an, uh, a thrill seeker? Um, yeah, I mean, who doesn't like to be thrilled, right? Some, you know, some people don't like to be thrilled. A lot of people like to sit at home and read books. A lot of people are kind of nerds. It's not that, a that's universal kind of thrilling thing, for them, actually. I guess. I suppose so. Everyone has their own definition of thrills. And the second reason is is because if, if I'm ever in a plane and need to jump out in an emergency, now I now I know what to expect. Well, you know what to expect if you have to jump out of a plane with a parachute. Right. So I. Uh, oh yeah, and and some some Russian guys strapped to my back. Right. You got to do it next time without the guy. Don't do it without the guy. That would be terrifying. Yeah, I, I don't know if I need that much practice. Well, I'm glad to hear that you didn't die. 
Glad I didn't die too. Well, before we go, tell me, what's your now, now that you've skydived? Because here's the thing about thrills, Will, is that you know uh, the effect can only last so long, right? Until you have to get the next hit. You know, so I'm I'm wondering where where do you think that that next hit of thrill is going to come, Will? That, that's a really good question, but I actually have a question for you. I wanted to ask before before we go here. Uh, why um why is your face not painted red? It, it should be red, right? For for a tongue because you're inside the mouth. Thank you so much for calling, Will. I hope you have a good rest of the night. <laughs> uh, you too. Thanks, guys. Call from Nick. 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 Hello. Hey. Hello. Nick. There you are. How are you? How's it going? Nick, can you uh, turn your stream off? It's off. Or it's muted. What are you doing right now, Nick? I'm watching you. Um, what did you do before you were watching me? Uh, smoking weed. Hanging out. How high are you right now? Not very. Really? Why are you not very high? Did you not smoke enough weed? No, it's just very consistent, so it's not like a big deal. You know what I mean? Interesting. All right, so you got into that point in your weed smoking career where being high has become sort of like a default state for you. Right, exactly. It's like twenty four seven, so it's kind of it's it's not like a, it's not for fun anymore. It's kind of just dependency. Interesting. How do how do you feel about that? Oh, it's miserable. Um, mm. and it's expensive, uh, but, uh, it helps with other things, so I need it, kinda. Is it like a, uh, medically prescribed thing? No, but it's essentially, it's essentially what I'm using it as. Mm hmm Have you talked to, like, a, a, a therapist or a real person about this? Yeah, I have a therapist actually. <laughs> Interesting. Well, I'm, what do they t uh, when you talk to them about this this dependency? Well, I, I'm curious. What do they say to you? Um, well, she's actually not uh, too against it, which I was very surprised at to begin with. Really? Yeah, I was. I was pretty shocked. Um, like she doesn't encourage it or anything, but it was very. Uh, you know, it was very like, well, maybe if you just tried to slow down or maybe if you just tried this before you tried smoking and things like that. So so you said she wasn't like, I mean, she obviously didn't endorse it, but she wasn't as appalled by it as maybe you thought she would be. Yeah, like, at all, like I would even be like, I'm like, like I have some on me now in the session and she's like, yeah, I understand. Like, you know what I mean? Mm hmm. Well, I almost feel like that is part of her job is to uh, not. I feel like if you if you shot up to a therapist and you tell them something and they went, wow, that's pretty fucked up. Yeah, know, exactly. They would, you know, like, I don't it's know supposed they... to feel normal, I guess. Sure. So she did a good job. So she was saying maybe you should do this instead of this or, or something like that. What what was right. she, what was she trying to say you should do instead of smoking weed? Uh, just like healthier habits, things that. Uh make me you know that like help with my uh like mental health issues so like you know uh maybe calling like my mom up or spending time with uh my pets and things like that or some mm. of her suggestions that i remember mm. you ever get really high and pet a dog though it's pretty cool it is pretty cool but i don't have a dog i have a cat unfortunately so. uh, unfortunately do you not like your cat I do, but I wouldn't. Who wouldn't love a dog, right? Right, right. Hmm. Okay, so she tells you to call your parents, play with your kids. Call my mom. Yeah. Call your mom. But I also feed a lot of strays in my neighborhood, so she'll say, "Play with your your pets or your cats in general." That's cool. 
That's yeah. cool. All right, so all right, so aside from uh, smoking weed, I mean, what do you what do you what else do you do, Nick? Um, I kind of do whatever I can. I kind of have an interesting income uh, or ways of making money and things like that. I don't. Uh, I don't tend to conventionally stick to like a nine to five. Okay. Okay. Uh, do 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 you mind sharing? I'm, yeah. I'm curious it's, to it's, hear what. So this, it's more uh, just is. like uh, it's more just like anything. So like um, I live a very uh low income lifestyle. I live in like a studio apartment in a very bad neighborhood, and uh, I don't drive a car. I don't. I don't have. I don't need much, um, so I don't need to earn much. So um, I just do like little things. My main source of income is I've started like a clothing retail business from like thrift stores and stuff like that. Um, so I do that a bit, um, um, or I'll pick up like shitty jobs for maybe a month or two. Like I just picked up one at a dollar store that I just started at. So I'll probably do that for like maybe a month or two and get a couple paychecks and then I'll probably quit and go back to doing this. I just needed, you know, some extra money. I like that. I think it's actually, I'm actually way more impressed. Whenever I hear people who are like, yeah, I, I, I live in a less nice place in a less nice part of town, but I, but I live by my own schedule. I'm always way more yeah. impressed by that than someone who's like, I got to whatever million dollar mansion or some shit. No, you know? I, my goal is to work like as little as possible. And, um, I have like really bad depression or anxiety and like some other mental health issues and like a sleep disorder. So it's really hard for me to work. Uh, mm -hmm. so I really try not to hold a, to, like a, a regular, it's hard for me to be somewhere at a certain time. And, sure. uh, like, you know, just, like, work for somebody else because it's, it's, like, committing eight hours to something can be really tough for me. Um, so I just, like, I'll, I'll do bullshit jobs. Like I said, like a dollar store where, like, someone's not really expecting too much of me and I can kind of bullshit mm -hmm. throughout the day and sit on my phone. And, like, I even walk home on my break and smoke weed and walk back and no one even notices. Mm -hmm. um, and then, like, I even do other things, too. Like, my girlfriend uh, has, like, a... a porn type thing so she'll sometimes pay me to do that and i'll get money from doing that too she, she, she has a porn type thing she has an only fans or something like i said that. yeah yeah but it's it's essentially bigger than that um but yeah, yeah it's like it, that's the big the easiest way to describe it it's very like mainstream now but she's been doing this for a couple years can, can i can i hear more about this yeah of course i'm very open about it so your girl this is your girlfriend pays you to be in porn with her essentially be like um so i don't know how much you know about only fans or um it's like i said it's pretty mainstream now so it's like pretty like everyone knows what it is right. um but i guess there's different ways to make money on the platform and uh the chat's funny um but uh so sometimes she'll just need a male because most of her stuff is solo anyway um, so sometimes she'll just need a male counterpart for maybe a video idea or something that we might come up with together. And she'll literally just pay me a percentage of the sales or she might just say, hey, I'll give you this much. Or, or like she just might help me with my rent that month and say, hey, will you help me make videos this month and I'll cover the $200 you need? And I'm like, hell yeah, of course. She's That's actually really sick. fucking cool. So it, it works out well. That's cool as shit, getting paid money to have sex with your girlfriend. Yeah, it's kind of that's kind of the best part. Um, unfortunately, I guess there's some issue with OnlyFans right now with um, having multiple people on it. So now I have really? to like register with the site and like go oh, well, through sure. all the paperwork. Well, yeah. Um, so we know. had to so we had to take down all the videos of us together, and it's all solo right now. And then um, I have to get all this paperwork figured out and do it all again. And but you mm -hmm. know it should be back to normal, but it kind of cut my income down a little bit. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, right? They have to make sure that you're over the age of eighteen, pretty much. Well, that's the idea. Yeah, yeah. But um, I don't know. It was no problem before, and we've been doing it for you know a while. And uh, now all of a sudden, it's a problem. So we had to take down all the videos, and it's going to take months to get like a, like I feel like a passport and all that. It's weird. 
So I'm curious, you said that it's, this isn't just OnlyFans. When I said it was OnlyFans, you said it's a little bit more than that. What, right. how, I know that she's, I know you, you expressed the fact that she's been like doing this a long time, but yeah. wh- what is it about her operation that oh. makes you say it's like big, bigger than like just, you know, running an, an OnlyFans account? Well, I guess just because she was doing it like before OnlyFans was even a thing, um, she was making a living out of it somehow and like, selling content online and do so like uh this only made it easier for her um but it's more than you know it's it's more than just like uploading pictures and videos to only friends and getting paid for it. it's like interaction too and like uh like constant conversation with people and like people buying you know gifts or whatever and wanting something right some right. sort of interaction back from it I've always wondered with like the huge OnlyFans creators, because I know that the part of the OnlyFans, I've always was part of the OnlyFans is like you know it's the pictures and the videos, but then there's the whole other part of the like you know I'll chat with you thing, and I always wonder for the for like the huge ones where it's like it is imp- there's no way like there's so right. many people who I, it, it can't possibly be them. Well, that's. That's what always blows my mind is how many people are willing to do it um, and like willing to spend money on it and things like that. And uh, but I've been, you know I've learned a lot in the process. I've known her a couple of years now, and uh, I've I've like she's taught me a lot about it, and it kind of it opens your eyes to how like uh, just horny men are in general, and like how many horny men there are in the world. And that they're willing to pay a lot of money for like uh, things they're kind of ashamed of, so you can mm. exploit that for a, a decent paycheck. Mm. You know, you should ask her if if uh, she would pay you to respond back to some of those messages as her. I've yeah, I've tried. Um, even though, like, oh, honestly, have. it's exhausting. Like, that's got to be the hardest part of the job. Um, I'm sure is just like. You know, just like hundreds, thousands of men like messaging you every day and like just wanting all different things and asking all different questions. And you can only imagine, yeah, it gets, it gets pretty nuts. But that's the thing is like if it's thousands and hundreds and it's like, how, how, ca- it doesn't even seem like it's possible for it for it to be her personally answering. It's pretty oh, crazy. Like, like yeah. you'd have to, you'd have to like start it. You'd have to like have well, a team of she, people. She's um. I guess that's what I think. Like the most popular ones, um, the most popular accounts that you know, like she, she shows me that in relation to her and things like that, right. is uh, like they're they're very engaging and they try to engage with their fans as much as like the highest accounts talk with their fans as much as possible. Right. And they 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 have like meetups and all different things and meetups. they do custom videos and yeah it's a huge huge underground market um, with all different kinds of stuff going on and different levels and fetishes and things like that so it goes all different places. Damn. Well, it's cool that she is cool that you're getting involved. Oh yeah, you know? it's definitely something I've always been interested in too. So. Uh, it's, it was a it was an easy stepping stone for me to get into it, and I've always really enjoyed it. So it works out well. Do you enjoy like the the performance on camera aspect of it? Yeah, there's not too much on my end to be honest. Usually, I'm a I'm more of a prop than anything. Um, so it's really it's easy. It's more just like easy. Yeah, that's like stand here and legit. and. Yeah, it's that's not too bad. I wish I could do it uh, full time and not have to work ever again. That would be a dream. Well, uh, what did you say your name was? Nick? My name's Nick. Nick, yeah. Well, Nick, man, look, it was a pleasure talking to you. I, I, yeah, man. Uh, I wish you the best of luck. I hope that, um, uh, you know, I hope I, 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 it sounds like you're doing good. I wanted to tell you one thing. I appreciate, by the way. I know that you're yeah. having a hard time. I know that you you're, you've been yeah, dependent yeah. upon we, but I appreciate that you're doing something about it. You know, I'm proud I'm of you trying. for doing that. It's been you know, it's been rough. I'm I'm really I'm working at it, and it's it's been you know, every day is a struggle. But I'm well, I'm, I'm trying, happy to man. hear that you're at least struggling as opposed to giving up. Yeah, well, I've been there too, and you know, I'm glad I'm glad I'm not there either. So, but uh, 
this is my first time actually watching and calling in too. So thanks for you know oh, yeah, picking man. up and talking to me. It's really interesting. Of course, man. Thank you so much. You have a good rest of the night, Nick. Yeah, you too, bud. Thanks a lot. Here's the thing. I would. Na- I don't. I don't judge people for. I try not to judge people for any of this. Any of this shit, and I don't. But but like if you're a guy messaging one of the huge ones like you like how can you like one of the like pages that has like a lot of people uh uh messaging the girl it's like how do you not like do I'm wondering do they know that it's not the girl because if if you're like I don't know like one of like the huge porn stars and you got like an OnlyFans where like you message people back there's no way that they personally answer like the 10,000 messages that they get I wonder if those guys know or maybe they do know but they just like in their head they think they pretend that it's that it is the person call from Jackson Jackson Lyle Jackson haven't we spoken before no not even once not even once. Nope. Well, goddamn. What's up with you? I'm watching Big Hero 6. You've been watching Big Hero 6? Yeah. How is it? It's one of my favorites. It's a good one. Oh, so you've seen it before? What's that? So you've seen it before? Yeah, yeah. Do you do you watch a lot of movies that you have seen already? Yeah, I'm. I don't know. I don't really go out and watch new. I don't know. It has to look really good. There's not really many great new movies that come out. I don't think. You know, I'm with you, man. I don't even know. Why. I I genuinely. I mean, this is gonna sound funny, but I truly do believe it. Why the fuck do they still make movies? There are already so many movies. How could anyone, I mean, these movie executive business people, how could anyone scroll through Netflix and HBO and Disney? and How could anyone scroll through these massive libraries of movies and go, we need more movies? It's impossible to me. What, what's your genre? What's your favorite genre, though? I I don't I don't watch movies, man. I I I actually don't. I really um, I watch fucking South Park reruns, and um, well, what about what about shows? What about TV shows, man? Are you a TV show watcher? Yeah, dude. I'll watch like, you know, uh, adult animation shit occasionally, like while I'm eating a sandwich. But I don't really like sit down and like watch the new whatever Game of Thrones. Shit, I, feel like, you know? I feel like you'd watch um, Eric Andre. I do like the Eric Andre show. The Eric Andre show's pretty good. But um, I'm a big fan of Aqua Teen Hunger Force. I watched... Th- I like... Uh, I like uh, One of the f- fun things about this is that by the time I'm done with this, it's like 1 a.m. And 1 a.m. is when the actually good shows are on Adult uh, Swim. I guess. You know? Uh, it's just Family Guy reruns until then. But... Fucking Aqua Teen Hunger Force rocks. Um, all sorts of stuff. All sorts of stuff. So, what was the question again? I'm sorry, I totally forgot. Jackson? Listen, well, don't get what mad thrills enough. you? <sighs> Nothing, really. Nothing thrills you? Nothing thrills me. Do you wish something thrilled you? Or are you okay with being unthrilled? I wish something did. But at the moment in life, nothing does. What do you do all day? I work. What do you work as? I graduate school and work. What's that? What do you work as? Uh, I work at UPS. That's a little thrilling. If if you if like a dog were chasing you, 
because you're like the mailman and you were doing like, oh, I'm a mailman, you're a dog, we're chasing me, kind of thing. Would that no, I'm, an, I'm in the warehouse. I'm in the oh, warehouse. okay, you're in the warehouse. But that, would be, that would be thrilling, yeah, that would be pretty fun. If a giant 12-story tall dog opened the, crushed open the, the roof of the, took off the roof of the warehouse... And then started chasing you and like picking you guys up and eating you. Would that be thrilling? Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. It'd be cool. Yeah. Would you think that would be cool? Like, if you're in the warehouse and there's some of your clothes and she's picked off by a 12 story dog, what kind of dog is it? Is it like one of those ugly white crusty dogs or. Ugh, God. I hate those dogs. I hate I hate the tiny dogs. That'd be yeah, terrifying if a tiny dog became huge and started uh, <laughs> picking me up and, and pick, picked me up and ate me. Yeah, I, I would not be thrilled by that. I mean, I'd be thrilled by that, but thrilling does not necessarily equal pleased. Yeah. All right, so your life is not thrilling. You work at UPS. You wish it were thrilling. Um... What do you do you when you're in while? You wish you had my life? What do you think like Um. What do geckos eat? I guess some like cockroaches. I ate, um. I eat a lot of stuff. I eat that junk, that gummy worm thing. I eat that. Oh, okay. Is Rhode Island any fun? Let's come out I've, there. I've, I've explained this a lot before, and I, I, I can explain it again, but I, I do not live in Rhode Island, and this is not um, my personal phone number. Well, have you ever been? I have not. If these live shows go, go well, though, I'd like to... Do something in Rhode Island. I might not do... I was looking today. Boston's pretty close to Rhode Island. So maybe I'll do something there. But pass through mm. Rhode Island. We'll see. I gotcha. Well, I'll let you get on to another color that's probably more interesting. Well, don't give up trying to be thrilling, man. Yeah. You have a good rest of the night. You too, uh, Have a good one, man. Love you. Love you too, baby. Bye. Call from Cameron. Cameron. Call from Carter. Okay. I Hello? Call All right, Cameron, you got to turn your thing off. Hold up. What? Hey. You talking to me? Oh, my God. I heard Carter on my stream. Fuck me like a cartoon. Fuck you like a cartoon? Like a fucking Looney Tune, my man. Oh my, I've been watching the stream for months, and this is the first night I tried to call in. I've been, okay. I've been the fucking weird ass, um, Kailash on the chat. I got some gecko business for you, man. You've got some gecko business for, okay, I saw yeah. someone in the chat mention that they had some gecko business. Uh, okay, please, man, okay, ahead, tell so, me about this gecko business. All right, I don't want to disrespect you. I respect what you do so much, man. You I love your stream. It. I love your podcast, man. I, so, I've been listening to your podcast for months, like I said. I heard the thing about the Brazilian girl who she was like, I really want to do a podcast or something like that. And you were like, Let's do it, man. You can talk to people in the Spanish country. Sure. I was listening to the one dude about how he was, um, he didn't have any memory. He had short term memory loss. And he just, I remember him. you did, you were talking to him about, you know, live in the moment and shit. And I've been really lost the past year, man. I've just been like really depressed, really not even getting into it you know i've just been really in a bad state and i've been trying to think of a podcast i've been trying to think of something talk to other people and stuff and like i said i respect what you do so much man and it's so like you just talking to people you just getting to know random people not even really giving advice man i have a formal a formal like you know a request to you to maybe extend the gecko family I don't want to disrespect you. I don't want to try to rip off your thing or anything. But like I said, I've been trying to come off with a podcast or something like that. And I really would like to 
not not give people advice, but converse with people and try to get out there more and just try to meet people, but not really through a first person way. And I was just seeing if you had any advice for me, man. And like oh. I like I said, this is the first time I streamed in, and I was telling yeah. myself, if you pick up, this is divine intervention. So man, I just I really appreciate that you of picked up, well, and this is this is it. Of course, man. Well, I, I want to say something <laughs> for you real quick. Expanding the Gecko family. Here's the thing. Uh, first of all, I don't know. I don't know uh, what specifically you're asking, but I will say this. I've had a lot of people message me and say, "Hey, can I have your permission to do a call-in show? I don't want to be ripping you off." And I, I exactly. say all of them. All well, I say all of them. I'm like, I. In no way, shape, or form, even kind of, even slightly, at all, whatsoever, am even close to the first person to do a call-in show. I do not own, in any way, shape, or form, the call-in format. I I agree with that completely, but here's my thing. Like I said, I don't... You're, the question right now is what thrills you, right? Sure. And what thrills me is being able con- being able to connect to people, being mm-hmm. able to relate to people, being able to meet random people and hearing their mm-hmm. thoughts and stuff like that. And that's what I feel like you do. And the only thing I, like I said, I felt like this is the first time I'm actually calling a stream. I've been watching for months. And I felt like if you picked up, it's divine intervention. And that's. Like I said, I don't want to disrespect anything you do or anything because I don't no. want to try to come up with a character and come up with a talk show or whatever and rip you off and stuff. And that's why. But that's the thing. I here's formally the thing. wanted to come out. It, oh, here's it, the like thing. I said, like I said, you doing what you do inspires so many fucking people, man. So I, many people I, right now are looking at you and they're wanting to do what you do. So we're just looking I, for a little advice and not any disrespect. That's what sure. I'm trying to say. I appreciate that. Here's what I'll say is that this idea that like you coming up with a character and doing a show it's like you can't copy me. And I'm not saying that as in like you do not have my permission. I'm saying that as in mm-hmm. like you cannot. In the same way that but, I cannot but copy you. You're so humble, man. You're a fucking novelty right no, now. No, here, but here's the, let me here hold on for a second. You you uh, there's all this is gonna sound cheesy and people have been telling us this since we were in kindergarten but it mm-hmm. actually has a lot of truth to it which is that mm-hmm. you no uh, it, again it's gonna it's cheesy they told us to it in kindergarten uh you actually are special regardless of like that's the, yeah. that's what I've learned is you go through the like in kindergarten you think you're special and then you get into the what the real world as they call it and everyone tells you you're not special and then I and then we I have emerged only and I'm like oh actually everyone is special um so you can only do what you do so you actually you can't copy me cuz I can only do what I do and you know other people have call and shows they can only be themselves right so for yeah. you to you have to do whatever your thing is. Like you, you. I'm not saying you can't do my thing. Is in like you don't have permission to. If you wanna, if you wanted to go put on a gecko costume and talk to people, you can do it. But it's 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 not you. Like who are you? You know what I'm what I'm saying here. You have to find out what your thing is. And it's cool that you're like. I think it's great that you're inspired by you know this, and I'm 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 very happy to hear that. But you got to find out mm-hmm. what your version it your way to interact with people connect with people and some advice i could give is like you know everyone's gonna meme on me but i don't give a shit is you know making tiktok content you know putting yourself out there on the internet because uh that's to me the best way to communicate with other people um but i don't know man i I would just try try stuff you know like yeah you're right and that's do do you have any ideas that's what I was kind of getting at. I don't want to come at your thing or anything, but no. that's what I'm saying. I had this idea like in fucking December and I was like, I was going to have this podcast where I live in Atlanta and I was going to walk sure. around Atlanta and I was just going to talk to random people and be like, how are you doing today? And I was going to have this podcast. And be like, it. How are you really doing? And what do you really feel? And I picked up on your thing. You started in like June, you said and stuff. And I just felt like for a couple months, like, oh damn, you kind of beat me to the punch. So no, what I was no, hold on. No, 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 like, I'm going to interrupt you. Hold on. Okay, what you just, first of all, you should absolute, I did not beat you to any, here, okay, here's, this is what I'm saying though, I didn't beat you to anything, 
I can name, I can literally name, I could probably name 10 fucking people who fucking go out onto the yeah, screen and talk to right. people. Fucking Kyle Mooney, All Gas No Breaks, right. Jimmy Kimmel, fucking, um, God. But what you feel so like? Many what people, you're so many people. So many people. Everyone. There's a kid like on fucking TikTok. He goes up to people in there. Everyone. This fucking talk. That the feels podcast so spontaneous. Guys. Chris so that's what I'm saying. Thousand, what you do no, is you have so to listen. You have to listen so to me. Personable. No, no, no. But you have to listen to me. The, there's a thousand people who do the thing of going to talk to strangers, whether it's over the phone yeah. or in person or with guests. But it. You know why there's so many? Because it doesn't fucking matter. Because y you are the only one that can do it in your way and it sounds cheesy but it is actually the truth you are the only one you're right that can you're talk right. to strangers in your own way so no so i didn't beat you to jack shit you know you go you should go and do your i think it's an awesome idea i think you should totally do your thing because you you have you i can no i can tell you have in your way like uh like you have this fucking the way that you come off, this persona, this thing, whatever, like lean into that and see who's attracted to it. So I think you should absolutely do this podcast, you know, that that you want to do where you go up to random people. Do it. The, the, I didn't beat you to anything. The idea of talking to strangers, uh, either on the phone or in person, has been done 8,000 times. But only you can do it the way that you do it. So you should do it. I didn't. I, you're not ripping off anything. Go do your thing where you talk to strangers in person. I, I I like that idea. I think you should go do it. Shit. I mean, I really don't know what to say to that because, like, that's what I was expecting. You know, you're always wanting to expect what you like, kind of want to hear. But it's just like, like you said, I have my. You you say I have my own thing, and a lot of people are trying to figure that out. And like I said, I'm coming from a point in my life where I'm just really, really like, it goes beyond explanation to where I'm just really lost. And that's where I feel like I'm so delved into what this you, thing to where I don't want to rip somebody off, but I want to kind of try to grow tomorrow? off of somebody. What are you doing? What are you doing tomorrow? Go I'm make, go make it. Go, here's the thing. Go make it. I just it. Go worked make the 60 thing. hours this week at a go warehouse that thing. I hate, and I'm just trying go to make, just... What's your name? Cameron. Cameron, Not Cameron, go make, go make <laughs> Cameron, Cameron, dude, I'm telling you right, I'm telling you right now, go make the video. Don't think about it. If you're, go make the video. That's that, that that's your hardest part. It's because here's the thing: going up to strangers and asking them how they're doing is very hard. It's actually way harder than what I'm doing. I'm, I'm actually what I'm doing is actually made way easier by the fact that people are calling me. So I don't yeah. have that whole thing of like you know having to put myself out there and go up to people. That's a, that's a that's a challenge. But I, that's the thing is I, I almost feel like you, you can't be afraid of that challenge or this is what you want to do. You have to accept that and you have to that, go just do it. So just go do it, Cameron. That's kind of what I was getting at at the beginning. It I felt, I felt kind of nervous about it and I felt kind of reluctant about it because, like I said, I felt like I was going to try to like – like I said, I kind of felt like a lot of people beat me to the punch and I felt like I was just going to kind of try to – figure things out, rip off a bunch of other things until I figured my thing out, but I guess that's probably what you just have to Cameron, go through, right? Worst case scenario, worst case scenario, maybe worst case scenario, maybe you fucking do it and then the first few times you do it you're like, "Oh, I sound a lot like this other guy." Doesn't mm -hmm, keep doing change it. it up. You will eventually come into your own voice. You just have to do it. That's the your problem is you just have to do the thing. And then figure it out later. Don't think about the thing. If you had the idea in December, don't get into your head about, oh, I ripped this guy off or I sound too much. Like, just keep doing it. You have repetition. You just got to keep keep doing it. And, and and by the way, if you keep posting it on TikTok, eventually something will pop. Yeah, the, the algorithm will pick up. So keep, keep yeah. doing that. That's all, that's all I'm going to tell you, Cameron, is keep or, or just do it and then don't stop doing it. That That's Man. the only way to do it. Yeah, yeah that, that's, I guess that's pretty much it. Beautiful. Yeah. Well, shit, I, I just want to say before we cut this off, I, I feel like we're about to cut this off, but I just want to say, man, don't ever say again that you're not a real therapist. Don't ever say that you don't know what you're doing, <laughs> gonna, man. What the, what I'm going to continue to say people, that I'm not a real therapist. Man, what you tell people, like I said, you are such a humbling, and I know you said it before, you don't like to be a... Um, a, a like modest appearance or whatever man but i guarantee you man i just listen to your stuff at night and i know for a fact because i hear the stuff that you tell people is what i would want to hear if i was in that situation man and you Good. really help people you Good. are a therapist just because you don't have a degree <laughs> you know what you're fucking talking about man and just you listening 
just you being there, it helps a lot of us, man. And like I said tonight, you picking up right now means so much to me. That well, thank you, Cameron. I just took the chance tonight, and man, this answers my blessings. Are you gonna make I the fucking you. video? I'm gonna make. I'm gonna. I will send it to you. To, I will DM you tomorrow. S DM me the. I will all right, DM me the video. Do. I'll watch it. I'm like. I'm curious. I, it DM might, me it the might video. be shit. It might be terrible. I'm gonna just. Don't I'm, care. I don't have any equipment or anything, but I'm gonna fucking don't, take you don't need equipment. You, 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 you know what? You do have the equipment. You have the cell phone. You're calling me on right now. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I'm gonna take the murder downtown tomorrow, and I'm gonna fucking just try to keep you on my blessings, man. Because I really appreciate this. Of course. Thank you so much, Cameron. Right, man. I appreciate blessings, it. Send man. me the video. Love Blessings you too, baby. to everybody to you out there, man. I love you so much, Mr. Gek. Good night, man. Good night. You better make the video. Call from Leah. Leah. Hello? How are you? Oh, my God. I actually got... Holy shit. I'm awesome. You're awesome. Heck, yeah, I am. Really? Why? Why are you awesome? Um, because I'm talking to you. So this is what I'm talking about. I, it's easy to talk to you because you already know who I am. If you were a stranger, and a man in a gecko costume just came up to you in the street, you would you would not you would be confused. It's why it's way no, harder. No, 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 no. No, you would. Like, you'd oh, be yeah. confused. Listen, see, I, I think you would. See, here's the thing. I think you would. I think you would because you seem like you've got a good energy. You seem like you're receptive to to things like that. But I wouldn't know that before I approached you. I am cold, you know. Right, right, right. That's true. That's true. How's well, yeah. it going tonight? You know, it's going uh, good. I'm having a, a, a chill time. Um, That's awesome. Leah, you said you work at an animal thing. You said you you said that you are an animal. You're a giraffe. What kind of giraffe are you? I am not a giraffe. I said I go to anime conventions. Oh, I think so. You I go would to not animal be surprised. Conventions. No, no, but I do foster dogs with a local rescue. Interesting, interesting. I want to start with the anime conventions. You go to anime conventions. How? What's the last anime convention you went to? I assume that they all got canceled. Yeah, God, it's been a while. It's been like at least a year. Mm. Since since what? Since the last convention I've gone to. Mm. It's at like a water park. It's called Kalahari. I don't know if you know what that is. It's but. at a water park? Yeah. That sounds rad. It is. And they have good like mixed drinks, so it's pretty chill. It sounds like you're just getting drunk at a water park and there's not a whole lot of anime involved. <laughs> There's there's actually a lot of anime. I mean, it's like a big convention. Mm. Um, do you have a favorite anime? Oh god, that's so tough. Um, I really like My Hero, but like I feel like that one's kind of mainstream. But um, I like Code Geass too. That's another one. Co Co Coco Puffs? No, Code Geass. What is that? I feel like animes have like weird names. Um, so Code Geass is like, I don't know how to describe it. It's so hard to like describe anime to a person because like you have to like actually watch it. Do you consider yourself a weeaboo? Eh, not like a total weeb. What per okay, so here's what I'll ask. What percent, do you have a life outside of, um, your fan, your your uh, being in an otaku. Um, yeah, I mean, outside of like anime, I like I said, I foster dogs, and That's I'm a domestic violence advocate. So, a a advocating against, right? Yep. Good. I help victims of domestic violence um, get out of situations. So that's like super cool and a lot of fun. Is that what you do, like, as a career? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that is my career. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Is that something that you've uh, wanted to do for a while? Oh, yeah. It's, like, my dream job. Beautiful. You sound like you got a good life. You sound like you're chilling. Honestly, <laughs> Leah. Thank you. Leah, what thrills you? What thrills me? I guess, like... 
going out and like getting clients from like their domestic violence situations and then like bringing them to our shelter. <laughs> oh, you know, I thought, you know, when you told me about this job, I assumed it was more of a of a phone thing. I didn't realize you were like going into these situations. Yeah, I do. Well, we do um, take like hotline calls too, as well as, well, under my grant, I can go and get victims from their situations and transport them to shelter. Interesting. That sounds like a like a, a good, you know, when people talk about the like, police alternatives type of thing. Yeah. I mean, I have I've had like the sheriff come with me once to like one situation, but is what it is. <laughs> right. I mean, that sounds like, you know, uh, I'm 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 very curious about this cuz these sound like very dangerous situations to go into. Yeah, it's usually pretty high lethality. So it's just like concern you? Sometimes. All depends on the situation, really. Do you like Like oh, we sorry, safety plan? We safety plan like before we go in to the situation. So like if I know the abuser's staying at that house, I'll have an officer come with me. Right. So do you I, I was going to ask, do you have like team of people like, do you go with multiple people i mean I, I i can't assume that you just go by yourself into one of these situations no, no it's usually just me unless if like i feel like it could be a dangerous situation i mean they're all like dangerous but right that's crazy it's a matter just... of how dangerous <laughs> right you just go completely by yourself i mean have you ever had to like you know, I, 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 I assume that um, a, lot, a lot of these situations don't end without, you know, someone putting up some sort of a fight. No, I've never had anybody, like, put up a fight because most of the times, whenever, like, I go and get the victim, it's usually, like, the abusers at work. Oh, okay. And then the one time, like, an abuser was actually there, he was like disabled so wasn't too big of a deal <laughs> nice well i mean look good on you for bracing those, those tough situations that, that sounds very scary but also sounds very rewarding to be able to help people uh you know very hands-on like that yeah it definitely is it's an exciting job now what how how long have you wanted to do this how, how can i ask how old you are yeah, um, I'm 23. Okay, so you're still pretty young. Yeah. Damn, I, I'm, that's 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 a pretty wild thing to be doing as a 23 year old. I'm not gonna lie, it's pretty pretty intense. Yeah, but it's totally worth it. How long have you wanted to do this? Um, I've wanted to do this for a long time, like a really long time, like since I was in college. Mm. Um, does it ever get difficult for you? Yeah, I mean, there's always clients where it's just, like, really hard to hear about their situations. Or sometimes, like, you'll get one that just hangs up. Sometimes they call back, but sometimes they don't, depending on, like, how long the abuser's hanging around. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I had one client be like, Oh, um, no, I don't want my car's extended warranty. Right. So. Because the, cause the, the, the guy probably heard her on the phone. Yeah, so she just, like, pretended like I was one of those weird salesmen. So. Right, right. It worked out. Hmm. Man. Is that, like, uh, it's, I, I, I'm so focused on, like, the fact that, like, you know, you as like a young, you know, I mean, it sounds like you're probably fairly recently out of college that like they send you into these like sort of dangerous situations. Yeah. I'll be good on you for good on you for for handling it. Um, that's cool. It must be nice too, because a lot of a lot of jobs, y you you do things, but you don't really feel like you're like doing things. You know. Right. This right. is one where I, every day, where every time you do something, you you actually did something. 
Right. Like, I couldn't imagine doing anything else. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Um, you sound like you have a very well-rounded life. You got the anime. Yeah. You got a good job. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, I've been through my own shit, but, you know, who hasn't? What's next for you? What's what's the next big lofty goal of, um, what's your name again? Leah. Of Leah. Yeah, um, next goal is to get married to my fiancé and, I don't know, live my best life. <laughs> How long have you uh, been with your fiancé? Oh, God. Like, three years? Hell yeah. How'd you guys meet? Yeah. Um, we actually met at work. Not, like, my current job, but whenever I was back home, like, getting my degree, I was working at CVS as a farm tech, and I met him there. Is he also into the anime stuff, or does he go, like, have fun at the conventions? I'm gonna stay home from that. No, he's he's the big nerd. He's a bigger nerd than me, so... That's good. <laughs> that's, yeah, uh, Leah, uh, uh, the more details you give me about your life, you know, the better, uh, the, the, the better it sounds. Yeah. We like hockey, too, so, you know... Well, it was uh, it was a pleasure talking to you, Leah. I hope you have a, a good rest of the night, and um, congratulations on um, living a meaningful life. Thank you. I hope you have a good rest of your night. Thank you so much. Of course. Have a good night, Leah. Thank you. Bye. What a person. Therapy Kit goes on the line, taking your phone calls every night. Therapy Kit goes to an anxiety. 